Okay guys, so today we're gonna to talk about another hormone. This is one that most people know of. Like whenever I talk to a client, they're always like, oh, I know what hormones are. And they'll randomly list off two. Two of those hormones. There are so many hormones throughout your body, guys. So many. But the two that people most, uh, most commonly know are estrogen and testosterone. So today we're gonna to talk about estrogen especially in regards to kind of like what it's doing in your body. Yes, it totally is working towards making baby land and all that good stuff. It's also going to be helping you kind of look younger, and not as much as other hormones that we'll talk about later because they actually play into factor with your weight. But estrogen is one of those kind of mood balancers. It's also a critical key player in your immunity. It's actually going to be an immunity booster. However, just like, just like candy, anything in excess is not a good thing. And estrogen in excess can actually lead to autoimmune disorders because we're constantly fighting anything and everything that shows up at the door. And it's not always a good thing because sometimes it's us, right? We don't want to fight us. So estrogen is one of those players that actually makes you hold fat because it's designed for baby making time frame. And when you're having a baby, you obviously are going to be holding fat in different areas, right? Exactly. So when you notice more like weight around your midsection, especially your lower midsection, that's typically brought on from hormones and more commonly not just any hormones, but that's typically an estrogen land. So they have like what's called a mom belly. Like you can see, like instead of just going like almost like a beer belly for like stress, it's more of a situation where it's got like a, a flat ridge on top and then the bottom like pooches out. And sometimes if it's stress and that hormone set up, that's the mom belly where you have a big ripple and a little ripple from stress and from hormones. Hormones by themselves should just cause like bottom pooch. This is that like muffin top situation where everything below is kind of pushing up, but you're like, oh, I still fit like a size six on the t-shirts. Why is it I'm two sizes different? You should probably look into your hormones. You should probably talk to a doctor as far as like if it's that excessive, it could be something else. So, um, but when it comes to hormones like estrogen, yes, we're gonna obviously have fluctuations in those levels throughout the month. Hi ladies, we all know that firsthand. And when it comes to estrogen, you wanna make sure that you are constantly doing your job as far as eating the right foods. There's actually, if you've never heard of seed cycling, that's actually like using seeds to help offset the hormone, the hormonal imbalance that occurs during, it's basically before, during, and after your period, but it's like right in that window. It's really like tight as far as like constant. <laughs> and when it comes to estrogen, you want to make sure that Again, you're not getting too much, but if you don't have enough, that's still an issue too. So you'll want to make sure that you are detoxing regularly. I can't stress that enough. And speaking of stress, stress actually increases your estrogen levels as well. So your stress is going to hit your immune system. And as a way to kind of like offset and kind of make up for that immune system loss, your body goes rank the estrogen. So you're going to have like this lovely hormone roller coaster where your moods are all over the place and your cravings are all over the place. And it kind of feels like you're pregnant, but you're not. And you're like, if I am pregnant, it's Jesus. It's one of those moments. And when you have that increase in estrogen, it kind of gives your body that immune response to make up for the stress reduction or to make up for the stress causing a reduction in your immunity. However, too much, especially under 
prolonged periods of times, which is why you need to do stress reduction regularly, can actually have detrimental effects. It can even lead to being completely unable to produce a baby. So the whole goal is for it to act as part of like fertility, right? And when you have it going kind of like off on its own and taking over, it actually makes it so that you become infertile. So ideally you want to do this detox is just so you're cleaning the slate again, at least every like three to four months, ideally just once the season, that should be like your, the seasons are changing. Ha, it's time to do, you do a detox. And you don't have to do anything crazy. It's again, natural, just changing out your foods. Even if you just eat seasonally, spoiler alert, it'll naturally detox you as well because nature detoxes itself. That's kind of like how it works. But other things super, super strongly suggest doing the stress reduction, actually we're doing workouts is going to improve your hormone levels as well. Again, those HIIT workouts, hi, that's another great way to kind of kick your estrogen back into the normal range. For those of you who don't know, different exercises actually increase and decrease different hormones. So if you are just rocking it out in the cardio world, one, kudos to you, because that is so not me. <laughs> but that means you actually are also producing a more testosterone than you are producing like estrogen because you're actually triggering more estrogen or more testosterone production during cardio than you would for any other workouts. So again, picking your workout routine is actually going to be kind of critical too. But if you have no workout routine, there's nowhere to go but up. So just grab something that works. I would highly recommend starting with walking. Ideally walk 30 minutes a day and that should be phenomenal. If you can get up to 90 minutes a day, then you're going to get the most benefits. And I'm not saying do 90 minutes in one sitting. Most people cannot, especially if they've never done it before. And it sounds so weird to say you haven't walked 90 minutes before, but a lot of people don't do a lot of physical activity, especially now. I mean, it's, we've been stuck inside for what feels like ever. And if you are in a situation where you're like, for example, on two week quarantine, and you're like, I still want to get my steps in, walk around your house. I'm not going to lie to you. I walk around this island like a crazy person a lot. It's how I think. So <laughs> I can honestly say the floor is getting a different workout and where in this area specifically. And I think I'm like a big part of that. So for that, I apologize. But pretty much just make what you have already accessible to you work and kind of find out what works best for you. If you have kids, do some stuff with them. Go swimming with them. I know it's almost winter. I'm sorry. Maybe don't go swimming. <laughs> But you can play tag indoors, or you can play, I don't know, hide and seek, anything where you're actively moving around. Plus your kids are going to love that you're giving them more attention. When was that not a good thing as a kid? Get more attention, unless it was, you know, I'm not doing anything that I should be doing type of situation. So again, estrogen, while important, too much is not necessarily a good thing. And it can definitely lead to weight gain, especially in the midsection on the lower scale. So hips, lower abdomen, butt, thighs, all estrogen land. Okay, so make sure you check back for our next video on weight loss and hormones and all that good stuff. Until then.